I just hired this vehicle from Arnold Clark, not Arnold and Clark, because I thought it was, and I'm going to live out of it for the next 12 days, touring all over England, seeing cities like Liverpool, Manchester, Birmingham, whilst sleeping and living in this tiny space. Here's how I turned my hired car into a camper to visit the UK. This is... What's in comedy? Step one, remove this. So it's super easy. There's a hinge here. There's a hinge over here. It's easier with two hands. There's one, there's two. With that platform out of the way, your next step is gonna be to put the seats down. Yank this, one seat down. Yank this, two seats down. So this folding seat doesn't go completely flat, but what I think can help the situation is if we get rid of these, I think that's a little flatter than what we had. So here's the other seat. It still has its headrest. So removing it does make it that much more flat. And then what you wanna do is pull your passenger seat as far forward as it can and lean it as much forward as you can. I've tried to lay straight. I'm slightly too tall, which never happens. The solution is to sleep diagonally. I was very fortunate when I hired this vehicle because my plan was to just go to secondhand shops and get everything that I would need to live in here that way. But I got a friend named Adam in Edinburgh um, who's a sweetheart and lent me a few items and I'll point those out as we go. So the first thing he hooked me up with were these pillows. Sleeping diagonally means that I'll be overhanging in this space a little bit. When the pillows were sitting in there, they were touched too low. So that's where our headrests come in. I've sort of configured them into like a little platform. So when we slide our pillows in and flatten them down, they're nearly the exact same height as the rest of our bed. I tried to just sleep on this with a little thin mat. I was waking up in pain. My back was really hurting. The problem was I needed something flat to go on this surface to be my base layer so that all the cushion could be on top of that. Just a flat piece of friggin' board, uh, three millimeters thick to be exact. When I got it, let's call it six feet high. And I just eyeballed it um, and asked the uh, the guy at B&Q to cut off um, this amount, which turned out to be friggin' perfect. This board too was only 11 pounds, friggin' steel. This is gonna be our baseboard for our temporary bed. Something I really like about B&Q, I happen to come across this piece of underlay, which I think is, uh, it goes underneath like a turf and it was pre-cut off. Um, so when I went and found a uh, an employee, they ended up saying they can't sell it and put a little note on it saying that I could just have it. I ended up cutting a little bit off because you're gonna wanna put some protection on the corner of these boards so it doesn't scratch the inside of the vehicle. These next pieces I actually did buy. I got them for seven pounds. That's just to give me some more cushion. So for those keeping track at home, I'm at 18 pounds spent on this bed. Everything else I'm about to put on here was lent to me by my buddy Adam. He hooked me up with a thin mat that he camps on. So he gave me this sleeping bag and a duvet. I'd be using the sleeping bag to sleep in if it was colder, but it's been like 28 degrees the last few days, uncharacteristically hot here in the UK. So I've been sleeping in the duvet and I've been using this as another layer of cushion. I always try to do this on the cheap. The less money I spend means the less I have to make and the more I get to live. But also I think it is a great tool to let other people who maybe don't have a plethora of money to be able to still go on a holiday and see a whole bunch of a country or a continent um, using this exact method. And of course, cause Adam's the best, he hooked us up with a bunch of pillows. Get yourself an Adam. So this is the setup. Now let me show you what other little tricks I've done. This morning I went and <laughs> bathed off the coast. So this towel is a little bit damp. I'll just have it here, chilling with the window down when I'm driving and then it'll uh, blow in the wind and dry it off. I'll even use this little flip hook here to do the same. All right, so this is my driving seat slash eating area. On my right in the little cup holder, I have got a can opener, which I've used for many a can of tuna. I've got a spork that folds into itself, collapses, thank you, Adam, and a knife, which I've actually used more times than I thought. And I've got this multi-purpose board. It's probably a touch longer than it needs to be, but it slides very nicely, just sort of on my lap here. This floating table also works um, in the back, in the bottom right compartment over here. I haven't had to use it yet, but this is, in fact, a pee jar, um, which was once instant coffee. I've now put the instant coffee somewhere else because this jar has got just the widest hole. And I've also got um, a rain jacket. In my middle compartment, I've got my coffee. I've got a Milky Bar yogurt and some packets of mayo because I've got some tuna in my glove box along with um, some spinach and some cheese. I'm gonna mix that all together as soon as I'm done shooting this and make myself a nice uh, hearty salad. In the middle compartment, I've got a battery pack. I use this to charge my phone. And then while I'm driving, I can charge this. Worth noting, there is a 12 volt here too. If you wanted to get like a little mini cooler that can plug into that. In the left side pocket, I've got some cleaner that I'm gonna use right before I return this vehicle. Hopefully it'll save me from a big fine. Baby wipes, 
to clean myself. Got a little bag of souvenirs there. That's it for up here. Let me show you the back. Usually I'll just leave my wee shoes here. It's a tight fit, so I try to yank my seat back. I'll also pop my steering wheel up to give myself a little bit more space. Adam hooked me up again with some elastics, which I've tied to this piece that holds the seat in place, I believe. And then tied it to one of the clamps on the ground here. And it's just sort of created a little sort of a clothing hamper. On this side, um, I've done something similar. I've got this strap, which just was in the vehicle, um, tightened around my underwear. The socks are in a little hole down there. And this right here is one of my favorite pieces. It's got this little hook and then my belt just sort of chills there. It's probably my favorite repurposed space in the entire vehicle. Well, that's not true. The bed. Over here, I got my toiletries in this bag. I've just sort of got them roped to this bad boy. By this door, I've got a little headlamp. Thank you, Adam. It's great because then you can use the elastic to attach it to your head and work hands-free. Something that's cool about this vehicle that makes it so perfect for stealth camping, all of these back windows are heavily tinted. The only way they'll be able to see you without really like inspecting the vehicle um, would be through these front three windows. But that's where I've realized that our extra piece of vehicle here can also be repurposed. I've got it sort of clipping on the front seat, but it just chills right here. One more thing I wanna show you, this little switch right here. And what that does is it activates a set of fairy lights that I've put up around this vehicle. I've just sort of tucked it, like the metal's just underneath there. And over here, you just push this up and the metal is just underneath. So I've got a separate set of lights now that I don't need to worry about draining the high on days. So I spent 22 pounds on this renovation here that is allowing me to trek all over the UK and find some of the best city stealth parking spots. Tune in to this channel and I'll show you all the best places to camp. Stay safe out there and enjoy your travels. Come on. Please don't forget to...